Hi, Amy with Experience the Quilt. Today, we're gonna to learn about tucks and how to add great texture to your quilts. So today, I wanna to teach you a really fun technique that I've been practicing and working and playing with for probably 10 years. This is an example of a sunflower and I'm gonna teach you how to, we can tuck these fun little petals into your fabric. This is actually pieced not applique. Except. If you'd like to know more about this fun bubbly texture in the center, that's another one of my videos called Bubbles and Wrinkles, and we'll put a link to it in the description below. You can also have so much fun making it into pillows. This is one that I did where I couched the center and lots of fun colors. There's, I've done snowflakes. There are so many different ways that you can do, things you can do with this technique. So let's get started. Okay, so to prepare your square, you want to cut a six and a half by six and a half inch square is about what I have. Um, you can pick any size you want, but this is what we're working with today. And you fold it in half and in half again and pinch the corner to find your middle. Then when you back open it back up, you can see where your middle is. And I marked it here with my chalk. Now I'm going to use my protractor this is a really handy tool to have with this because you need to have angles. And I put my center right on the center there. I have a little mark, it's right there. And then I'm going to mark 90, which I did right here. And I'm going to do every 60 degrees. So 90, and then I did it down here at 270, directly across or right here if you want. And you're not gonna do on the sides, you're gonna mark from here 60 degrees. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Is that the 30 right here? Try to get that straight. And then I'm gonna count to 60 again. 10, 20, 30, 40, 60 right here. And then this will be our 60. So then I'm gonna count from here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 is right here. and then at the 30 degrees here. So then I get a straight line, like a ruler, and I had to grab my ruler real quick, mark those lines all the way across. So line them up nice and straight. And then these two marks. So you need to only draw three lines. There's my three lines, right? And then you will cut those apart, not before, not before marking them. I have little labels here marked one, two, three, four, five, six, and I start in the top left corner. It doesn't really matter where you start. I like to do it like a clock but you don't have to, you can mark it. As long as you're going in order, don't, don't mix them up. Start wherever, but go in order and label your different pieces, okay? And then you're going to cut it apart and you can sew your petals in. So that is how you prepare your square. So if you're using a dark fabric, you're going to want to use a light marker, a white marker or chalk. If you're using a light background, you can use just one of your, you know, a regular pen or pencil or fabric marker. And that works great too. So I have marked my sections and then I've started at the top and I've used my painter's tape to mark one, two, three, four, five, six, each section. You want to do that so you don't get confused when you're sewing because we're going to cut it apart right now. So um, actually what I'm going to do first I forgot, is I'm gonna cut my center out. You see how I marked some lines and I marked my center? That's where you will use your compass and mark how big you want your center. If you're, I'm just doing a very little one on this and uh, if you're doing a flower or something, you're gonna to wanna to do a bigger center. So I'm really just gonna grab my fabric and cut a hole and I'm going to remove that center. And it doesn't really matter how neat and tidy it is that much because it's gonna be covered up 
by a cute little button at the end. So you don't have to panic about this being super, just try to keep it small and simple. So there's my center cut out, but that's a good thing to do first. It's easier to do it now than after you cut all the pieces apart. So now I'm going to line up my ruler on that line and cut it apart. And I'm gonna do the same thing for all those different sections. I usually don't do this twisting. I just cannot stand at the moment. So I'm going to, I'm doing a lot of weird stuff for my seat this time around. <laughs> So we have all our sections cut apart. Then you're gonna take fabric for your petals or your snowflakes or whatever you're gonna do. And I used a jelly roll actually, cause it's already cut to two and a half inches wide. And so I then just cut it in one direction with my little square and I cut two and a half inch squares. So it was really fast to just cut a bunch of squares. So you're gonna then take the squares and fold them right sides together. Take it to your sewing machine. And I like to start from the middle corner rather than these ends. They tend to be a little wonky when you start from those tips. I start from the center tip and just using a quarter inch seam allowance, I do a little straight stitch all the way down. And I do all my petals at once, but I've already pre-sewn my other petals. So this one is the last one I have to do to show you. So, and then you trim, not the center, but the corner that you came off of, you're gonna trim that corner off at an angle. Otherwise, it's too bulky when you turn it right sides out. So then I take it and I push it with my fingers as far as I can go. And then I use my little pencil or my little funny doohickey that turns corners out great. I don't know what you call it. I think it's something to do embossing, <laughs> but I don't emboss anything. So I've got my little corner all ready to go. Okay, so then I take one and two. I always start with number one, right? And then you stick the corner without the seam. So here's your seam. The corner without the seam, you're going to stick in the corner right at the tip of number one. Okay, right at the tip. And then you're going to take number two and sandwich it over the top. So it's a little, we're just tucking that pedal in there, that's why we call this tucks, because we're tucking that petal inside there. And I'm going to take it to my machine and sew straight down, quarter inch seam allowance to the center. There's no chain piecing on this part because we're doing one to two, two to three. So see how we have that? Now I'm going to do the next step and tuck the next one not the seam allowance, but the other corner and not the sewn corner. We're gonna lay that right on top and take number three and right sides together, line those corners up really neat. This is where you do need to be precise is on this spot. If you're uncomfortable not pinning, then pin. I just do one little pin to hold everything together. I'm not a pinner, but sometimes I do on this project, it makes it a little bit easier. So I just pinned that and I'm going to sew quarter inch seam allowance from one side down to the point. And I'm just careful, slow it down if I need to. You don't need a back stitch. And there we have one, two, three. So I'm going to do the same thing with four, five, and six. And then I'm going, and then I'll flip it over and sew it together. So I'm going to put this onto time lapse and show you the rest of it. Okay, we're all sewn together and you can see that I'm a little wonky. I didn't sew very straight. We can square that up or I can just be a little more careful next time. <laughs> so now you're going to tuck the bottom and pull that out and look how cute that little petal is. And you're gonna do the same thing for this one, you're gonna push the bottom under that seam, you're gonna push it under and pull out the sides. So we get a cute little petal. Do you see that? And that's is one reason we take that middle and we probably should have done it even a little bit bigger because now our middle is basically sewn up. 
and I forgot about that part. That's that's what you get when you're just, you know, sewing on the fly today. I forgot that I wasn't supposed to sew that middle up, that I was supposed to keep sewing all the way around, so we'd have some circle in the middle there. But that's okay, our button will cover that little mistake up. So that's probably another reason why we're kind of wonky and not quite square. Um, so you just keep pulling all those, but I since we are, you can then sew these by hand and stitch right here and here, and you can pull this middle in if you want, and stitch you can like it's easier once they're stitched down you can pull this together and make a cute little pull in like we did on our sunflower here I pulled it in right like that this one you might want to leave out flat it's it's totally up to you and what you want to do so you can hand stitch or you can take it to the sewing machine and just do a quick little right in the corner here do a tie off. So instead of hand stitching it today, I'm going to just set my tie off and stitch. And you, I should probably use some matching thread, but I'm showing you without matching thread so you can see what I'm doing. And my little machine is great because my little faff, because I can just do a quick little tie off. And you see, that's my little boo boo that I just did. So you won't notice that thread it'll be just a nice little tie off and I don't have to hand stitch it which you know I don't love to do you might like to do that and that's okay you can hand stitch it so I'm choosing not to this will be faster for me today that just ties down and you can trim your little threads up so it looks nice and neat but it holds our pedal down isn't that fun so the same, you can keep doing that all the way around so you have a cute little flower. This is not a technique that I would use in a quilt that you would wrap up in and cuddle in. This is something I would use to hang on the wall or be a pillow to look at. But here's a fun idea that I've been playing around with today is making some dragon scales that I thought would be really fun to turn into a cute little dragon. And I think that this is very similar to what we grew up with, I grew up with, with um, on the edges of our quilts. So this could be something that could be loved with more um, because you're not hand sewing something down. You could, I toyed around with the idea of pulling these apart and you know making a, a funny looking petal or you could make them longer there's just endless ideas that you could do with this project i really hope you enjoyed this project today and i hope you'll experiment with it at home if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below and please like or subscribe and share with your friends if you have any quilts that you'd like finished please send them our way at experiencethequilt.com